Jason Odom, third leading scorer in the conference. Jake Crowder leads the league in steals in Big East games. Four of the five Villanova starters have improved their scoring numbers since league action started. Malik Went is the leading scorer in the Big East in conference games. James Bell is averaging 14 points per game over his last three as a starter. And Kingston is up his scoring average by about three points per game since conference play began. Pat Driscoll, James Breeding, Tim Cloggerty are officials. As Villanova, a team that's played much better the last few weeks. Trying to get a signature win, get back to 500 overall. And keep postseason hopes alive. Here's a three-pointer from the wing that drops for James Bell. Right on cue, Bell playing much better the last month. Here's Johnson Odom, never afraid to attack the rim. And he misses his first shot. Now, Villanova, a much different team when either Sheik or Bell make shots. They need productivity from at least one of those two. Ball the way jumper won't go for Pinkston, but still Villanova ball. And a missed layup by Pinkston inside. To Dugan driving down court, draws the contact, and a foul on Malik Waynes. Buzz Williams, fourth season as the head coach at Marquette, got his 100th win as a head coach, including a stint at New Orleans the other night against USF. And another foul on Villanova. Two quick ones for Jay Wright. And you know it must have really pained Jay to not put on a suit today. We know how much he enjoys dressing for game day. I think he looks pretty good usually regardless of what attire he is sporting on a particular day well, He's certainly frustrated with the way his team has played this year He knew it would be as you talked about with him a transition year for Villanova with the guys They've lost and they've always had seemingly a senior glue guy and they don't have that this year Well, you're asking Malik Waynes uh, To be the go-to guy and uh, he has shown flashes in his career behind the guys in front of him But now it's an every night thing for Malik and by the way, the reason Wright not wearing a suit uh, for coaches versus cancer awareness is that drops to get Marquette on the board. And you got Buzz Williams uh, wearing a suit with sneakers. In fact, Marquette wearing three different styles of pink sneakers today. And now we've got a Marquette foul on Gardner trying to set the screen. First on the Golden Eagles. See, once the NFL players wore pink shoes, they gave permission to every other athlete to go ahead and do it. Real men can wear pink. Yes, sir. I got a pink shirt on today. You have a pink shirt with a beautiful pink stripe in it. Interception there as they try the alley-oop. Off the inbounds pass. Here's Johnson Odom. And he'll fire a three. Fourth in the Big East and made threes. He couldn't hit there. And here comes Waynes for Villanova, averaging over 20 points per game in league action. And over his last four games, 28 points per game. And a reason why he's shooting better from behind the arc. A turnover as Johnson Odom tried to hit Jamil Wilson on the baseline. Well, Malik Wayne's now adjusting to that role. I think early on the struggle for him was understanding when to be that dynamic scorer and when to go ahead and transition other guys into the offense. And now he's, he's got a feel for it. You have to go through it as that lead guy to understand it. Here's Pell again for three. And that's the third three for going over to start the game. And a 9-2 Wildcats lead. Vander Blue back down court. And a foul is called. Yaru was trying to extend and stay vertical. But he was not set. According to Tim Cloggerty, his first foul. For Jay Wright, he's talked about the, the fact that this team has been coming, and it's a team that he believes can make shots, and when they make shots, then Muth Yaru will get better touches inside because he'll get isolations. Andrew Blue shooting just 42% of the line in league action. We mentioned Doris at the outset of the telecast that it seems like each week you and I are trying to figure out, okay, after Syracuse, even though we saw Syracuse lose, they're still the best team in the league. Who's number two? Right, and we are exactly at the midway point. And if you look at this, you know, the standings are certainly thinking Marquette is in that mix. Georgetown is in that mix. Georgetown will go on the road at Pittsburgh today. Pittsburgh desperate for another win in conference. 
So I think that'll be a good test for the Hoyas. That's a four o'clock game on ESPN as Bell almost lost the ball out of bounds thanks to the defense by Blue. I really would have liked to have seen Marquette with Chris O'Toole in the lineup. Yes. You know, the injury to him, I think, hurts them not only in the short term, but the long term. Crowder picked up the foul, trying to go for the block. Second on Marquette, first on Crowder. You know, too late, tore his left ACL. And you talk about, okay, the numbers really don't stand out. Five points, four rebounds, but he's a defensive presence. And you wonder... Once they get into the NCAA tournament, really without that big, they're not a shot blocking team without him. 6'11, 265, you know, creates angles by the space he takes up inside the paint. So that creates driving angles for pretty good drivers in Vander Blue and D Darius Johnson Odom. And then defensively, I mean, think about the NBA and how much they value a guy at that size just as a rim protector and the space he ate up inside. You know, look at the five on the floor for Marquette. Granted, a you know, Villanova's a smaller team, but Yuru is on the floor. He's 6'10", and the tallest Marquette player is 6'7". And that's Wilson. Ball pinballs out of bounds, and it will go to Marquette. This has been a little bit of an issue for Marquette. Slow starts, putting themselves at a deficit, and then having to climb out of it. Now, they were up early. They got their legs underneath them at the 7 a.m. shoot-around. Now, there, there are teams in college basketball that don't shoot around period, and then you get Marquette shooting at 7 a.m. as Crowder missed the layup. And Marquette really looks poor on offense as double dribble is called on Malik Wings. Turnover for Lenovo. What do you think about Jay Crowder in his five-game winning streak? He's finishing at a clip of 52%. He's been a high percentage finisher the entire season, and, and just sitting there going, I can't get you a yeah. better shot if you're Buzz Williams. And Crowder's had a terrific year. He's ninth in the league in scoring. He's hit 43s on the year. Hit 42 all of last year. Typical Marquette swing man. 6'5", 6 6'6". 6 6. Will attack the rim a lot like Wes Matthews. Good defender. He among the league leader in steals. Love him. Absolutely love his game. And that's going to be a travel. To Dugan. Walk that time for Marquette. Another substitution is Cadugan will go to the bench and Derek Wilson comes into the game. So you're seeing things from Marquette early in this basketball game that are contrary to their consistent habits. The miss by Crowder, a turnover, a rare turnover for Cadugan. And those are mistakes these guys don't usually make. They had five turnovers the other night for the entire game against South Florida. Yuru gets it to go inside. It's 12 to 3, Villanova. Meanwhile, Marquette with more turnovers than made field goals here in the first three and a half minutes. And another poor shot inside. They do get a foul on Villanova. Like it was on the rebound attempt. It's well, on Yuru is second. Where Yuru catches the ball is crucial. If you allow him that kind of deep post position, particularly on isolation against a guy who's not a tremendous defender at this point, Gardner, he's going to make those shots. So Yuru will go to the bench with two personals. Meanwhile, more players shuffle in and out for Marquette. We haven't even hit the first TV timeout. And there are players that started the game on the bench and came in, came back out, and came back in again. <laughs> He's making you work today, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Need a spotter for basketball today. <laughs> Here's Johnson Odom off the Crowder screen again driving the lane and got it blocked as he tried to shoot with his off hand his right hand out of bounds it'll stay Marquette ball now that is a set they run often for DJO they put him on the right side of the floor he's a left he's comfortable moving in that direction a little stagger screen for him this is one of the outstanding scores in the Big East Conference another change made by Williams Gardner to the bench Jamil Wilson again who did not start has now come out of the game twice he's back on the floor Todd Mayo younger brother of OJ Mayo of the Memphis Grizzlies in the game Mayo averaging close to 10 points per game off the bench here's Kadugan Wilson lost the handle shot clock at four Mayo will fire now give credit to Villanova's defense even though Marquette's offense looks out of sync here's Cheek on the drive oh able to hang and put it in off the window 14 to 3, Villanova. Marquette just 1 of 8 from the field. 
Wilson with two defenders on him took the shot and bailed out by a poor foul committed from behind. A great start. Vanderbilt, they get out, they start terribly. I think something like two for 20. And it's, you know, it just puts you behind the eight ball. Jamil Wilson. It's the first free throw. Just one field goal for Marquette, one of eight from the field. Here's what you're talking about, Doris. You mentioned Vanderbilt. Here's what they've done recently in the league games. Down 16 to Louisville, come back and win by double figures. Did I just make up a word? My English teacher is cringing. I think I said ununderstandable. <laughs> well, you were doing that last time. Some verbosity, you were trying to throw that in there to impress Jeff Van Gundy last night. He was calling the... Uh, Nick's heat game on ESPN. You were helping him uh, try to throw out a, an impressive word during the telecast. Here's Cheek on the drive. Got into a couple defenders and a blocking foul is called. Sixteen foul on Marquette. And get Wilson for his first. I checked that just the third team foul on Marquette. Meanwhile for Villanova. A five team foul. Dominic Cheek, one of several players in the Villanova roster who, in terms of, and again, it's hard to say this because, you know, McDonald's All American, you never know. Player doesn't make the transition always from high school to college, but based on what they thought, he's underachieved. Well, you know, I think the thing for him is it's got to be a little bit more consistent. You can have him get a game where he gets 20 points, and he can follow that with a game that's two points. And, you know, if I'm a defender, I'm going to get into him. I'm going to be as physical as possible and just try to knock him off, see if he's willing to engage me in that kind of game. Davante Gardner with the jam, the first field goal in four minutes for Marquette. And that's the spark. And the Golden Eagles needed an emphatic dunk to wake them up here. Problem hasn't been their energy on defense, but their offense so far has really struggled. Here's Pinkston. And that's traveling. Spun to his left and back to his right with Crowder defending. Third turnover by Villanova. Well, the start has already gotten the jacket off of Buzz Williams. He's a big clothes guy, too, so you know he'd prefer to keep that sporty thing on. Again, just an opportunity to show off the pink. <laughs> Darter trying to handle that entry pass from Kadugan. Knocked away by Bell. Here comes Chief for Villanova. Bell's hit a couple of threes so far in the ball game. Marquette's lone road win was against Providence. The other two games on the road they lost to Syracuse and Georgetown. Nice little floater by Malik Waynes. He's got five points for Villanova. Boy, Kadugan just trying to sit down a stance, and he's a guy that it's difficult to get by, but Waynes just so crafty with the dribble. Had 39 in a game earlier this year at Cincinnati. Turnover by Marquette. Waynes in the open court. Didn't have numbers. And finds Cheek on the opposite wing. Bell will fire another three. It's good! His third triple. Villanova's sixth consecutive made field goal. This team would get better. Everybody would get a little bit more comfortable with repetition in their particular role. They're 10 and 11 on the year, 3 and 6 in the Big East. That's tied for 12. They started the Big East 0 and 3. They had some poor non-conference losses earlier in the year, but they're certainly playing better of late, and it's showing here in the first half. Another miss inside by Crowder. Villanova getting out in transition. Here's Bell on the drive. Missed the layup. Now Vander Blue trying to take it back down court for Marquette, and Mayo waiting for some help. Here's Johnson Odom. He'll fire a three. Johnson Odom still without a field goal in the ball game, but only seven points as a team for Marquette. Waynes and Crowder with a nice steal. He leads the Big East in conference games over three steals per contest. More bodies on the floor. And 
going to be a held ball that will go to Marquette. And the crowd reacting as they should. And that's just both sides. I think this crowd is applauding both teams. They always cheer hustle in Philadelphia. And you know, save the 76ers, it's been a rough year for uh, the athletic teams in Philadelphia. A lot of people expected more out of the Eagles. Didn't happen until the end of the year. Expectations always high for Villanova, even with the losses they've had. Yeah, and I say this to you, notoriously tough professional crowd, but, uh, you know, the reality is if you give great effort, Philadelphia fans are going to appreciate you, and I, I believe in my heart of hearts that they were cheering both teams for the effort in that particular instance. I guess I should mention the Flyers, too, are having a good year here in Philly as Ty Johnson picks up the foul, his second, and the sixth on Villanova. Right now, Villanova has turned four Marquette turnovers into 10 points. So if they could stop, you know, hurting themselves, they'd be better off offensively. Johnson Odom has it swatted away by Sutton. Pinched it out in front. And fouled by Crowder. Not a flagrant. Second person along Crowder. Well, it's not Jay Wright's best defensive team, but one of their better defenders, and a guy that missed some time with a thumb injury. That is just great length and timing by Sutton. So Javon Pinkston at the free throw line shooting two. You see the numbers for the season. In Biggie's play, he's over 11 points per game and six rebounds per game. Close to 12 rebounds per game, his last three contests. The Dugan back on the floor, Crowder back to the bench. Now you think about Pinkston, I mean, really without competitive basketball for, for a good stretch of six to eight months, and it's hard to sort of get your rhythm back. He missed last year, violated a university code of conduct, had to sit out the entire season, said he was miserable. He's a McDonald's All-American. Realize he's been given a second chance and wants to make the most of it And he's really playing his best basketball as a wildcat the last month Gardner good pass by Kadugan And four points now for Devontae Gardner But Kadugan's assistive turnover ratio is about 2.38 to 1 meaning for every couple of assists he's getting one turnover so you can see I mean he can set guys up for good shots Blocked by Jamil Wilson Pinkston can't finish got it back up just to finish your point on Kadugan, he's had four games this year with nine or more assists, so he's very capable of having a big game. And Villanova will get another possession. Villanova perfect, four of four from behind the arc, seven of 12 overall from the field. Uh, there's their first missed three. It's Waynes who couldn't hit from the corner. And out of bounds off of Marquette. Well, you say this for Marquette, they're accustomed to playing from behind. They don't get rattled, and their effort defensively always seems to keep them in ball games. Wayne's on the drive, and good position defensively by Gardner. And now a technical foul on Jay Wright. So offensive foul. And then the T on Wright. Wayne's picked up his second personal foul. Well, he looks a little bit surprised that he got the technical. It was actually Kadugan who drew the charge. And Jay Wright He's is still crazy. screaming. He might get another one. He has to be held back by Pinkston. So 17 fouls on Villanova, two free throws for the technical by Darius Johnson Odom, 76% foul shooter. Well, last night Paul Silas got thrown out in this building for two technicals. Head coach of the Bobcats, and they're playing the Sixers. And Jay Wright doesn't watch it. He might get number two as well. And maybe that's what will turn things around for Marquette here. Pat Driscoll. 
happy to listen right now to Jay Wright. Jay's still talking. Pat saying, hey, I, I got to officiate this play here right in front of me. Juan Anderson on the floor for Marquette. Wilson almost traveled. Anderson, baseline slip and travel. Fifth Marquette turnover. Ty Johnson running the point for Villanova. Yakubu and Kennedy on the court right now for Villanova as the Wildcats got off to a good start offensively. Last few possessions uh, have been poor. Here's Cheek, an open three. Kadugan didn't pop out in time, and Cheek buried the triple. The fifth for Villanova. Cheek with seven points, and it's a 16-point Villanova lead. Johnson Odom coming off the screen. Wilson raising, can't hit. And Marcus Kennedy, who averages five rebounds a game, freshman from here in Philly, gets the board that time. Good pass. And the easy bucket for Kingston. It's Kennedy with the look. Driscoll. Combination of excitement and anger over the uh, technical foul. Well, he's playing his case with Pat Driscoll. He's upset with James Breeding. And he said, uh, you saw him in our video say that's the second time. We're not quite sure what he's referring to there. Johnson Odom on the drive, floats it up and in for his first field goal. But you've got to survive now without Waynes. And can you run good offense and continue to get shots? Waynes and you were with two fouls apiece. Gardner and Crowder with two fouls each for Marquette. But those two guys are on the floor for the Golden Eagles. Here's Bell, a two-pointer. He's in double figures with 11 points. Almost matching Marquette as a team. Gardner into the defender and no foul is called. Good defense by Kennedy. Cheek had it blocked by Crowder. Johnson Odom. Bell will challenge Johnson Odom with the bucket and a three-point opportunity. Boy, he is difficult. We talked about this guy attacking the rim. He's got great speed. He will outrun you, even if you've got a step defensively. Nice job defensively by Crowder. And then this guy in the open floor. Oh, yes. Crafty, a little English on it. A high dribble doesn't matter. And he's just pushing that thing out. They get Pinkston for the foul, his second, 19 foul. Johnson Odom with back-to-back -back field goals after only one point in the first 10 minutes of the game. Was that a little Kevin Durant free throw Olga, line shoulder yeah. shake? Yeah. And six points down for him. He and Marquette back within 15. Syracuse leads the Big East at 8-1. Marquette and Georgetown tied for second at 6-2. Georgetown plays Pitt today on ESPN. Syracuse has West Virginia on ESPNU. No Fab Mello again for the Orange. Bell can't get that one to drop from the wing. And here comes Johnson over again with that high dribble. And hits again. Starting to get it going, and Villanova calls it timeout. Johnson Odom now with eight points. Marquette back with minutes, but Marquette on a little bit of a run to cut the lead to 13. Consecutive games where uh, Malik Waynes finds himself in foul trouble, and he, he gets situations where it's back-to-back -back quick calls, and then Jay's got no choice, but he's got to survive long minutes without him. Now, Yuru is back on the floor for Villanova, playing with two fouls. Derek Wilson just picked up one from Marquette. It's his first and the sixth on the Golden Eagles. And one of the things you have to realize about Marquette and why they can withstand these slow starts and get themselves back into and then go on and win games, they're older. So 
Darius Johnson Odom, Jake Crowder, they were go-to guys a year ago. They understand in this league, you just keep playing. Tough shot by Marcus Kennedy. We saw him make a great pass earlier. Here he makes a good move on the low block to get his first bucket. Jake Crowder, good look. And the basket by Jamil Wilson. Well, Crowder's struggling on offense to put it in the basket. Doesn't have a point, but makes a good pass. And then a bad pass, a turnover by Villanova. Here's Crowder, a three-point try. Still cannot find it. Out of bounds off of Villanova. 13 points. Wildcat lead. From Georgetown and Ashton Gibbs from Pittsburgh. Two pretty good guards in this one. Darius Johnson Odom and Malik Waynes, although Waynes on the bench in foul trouble. Johnson Odom off to a poor start, but he, he's picked it up of late. He's got eight points. Pick a ten as he buries along two. He is now, I, I believe, he's, he's made, is it five of six now for him? He started 0 for five, so. He's four for his last five. Here's Johnson with the jumper, back rimmed it. Something trying to get to the loose ball. Contact and a... Out of bounds, last touch by Marquette. Sutton and a Marquette foul. That's a 17 foul, so it'll be a one and one for... Maurice Sutton as Jamil Wilson picks up his second personal. Sutton's only attempted six free throws all year, made five. He'll have a one and one. Villanova is the best free throw shooting team in the Big East at 75%. And they came in the last in the Big East in field goal percentage, but it's interesting in the league games, they're ninth. So they have shot it a little bit better. And we've seen that play out in the first half today. Sutton one of two, kept alive for a moment by Kennedy, but they're going to get him for a foul. So it'll be a one and one down on this end. Kennedy picking up his first personal. Actually, it's the 10th team foul in Villanova, so it'll be two free throws for Marquette. Wow. Two free throws for Jamil Wilson, 72% of the year. Over his last two games, averaging 12 points per contest off the bench. Very deep Marquette team. This, feel, this game just has a weird rhythm and feel about it. Well, you had to think that Villanova would keep up the hot shooting, just based on their numbers this year, being at the bottom of the league in three-point shooting and overall field goal percentage. And you knew at some point Darius Johnson Odom was going to make a bucket. He's, as you said, hit four out of his last five after a slow start. The game feels like it's completely changed. Like this 11-point deficit doesn't feel like much right now because Marquette feels like it's it's getting its legs and now they're coming with some pressure. And again, because it's a year in transition without Malik Waynes, you know, can they get to the half yeah. going over? They survived for a while with him on the bench. What can they do here over the last seven minutes unless Jay Wright decides to put Waynes back in the game with two fouls as Sutton almost throws it into the seats. The backup point guard is Ty Johnson, a freshman. They're having trouble getting it to him here because of the defense by Wilson. And Johnson will pull it back towards midcourt. Timer at eight. Peek with five to shoot, forces it off, and Johnson Odom called for the foul. Buzz Williams hit the deck. And it just got teed up by James Breeding. Buzz Williams dove on the floor in disgust and got called for a technical foul. So each coach hit with a tee by James Breeding. Oh, they had played such good defense. Left side of your screen, there's Buzz. Did he slip or did he die? I don't think he slipped. <laughs> <laughs> so, free throws for cheap, two foul shots. And then you also had uh, 
the foul I fell on down. Johnson Odom. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but he just said it. I fell down. Yeah. And he slipped. And he's he's yelling that across the court at James Breeding. And now and James is looking back at him saying, I you jumped. I guess if he had the uh, $200 loafers on, you could understand that he slipped. But he's got the nice sneakers with the tread. It's uh, hard to sell that one, but Buzz is still trying. And Pat Driscoll, now that's twice where Driscoll has come to the aid of James Breeding to go uh, play the, uh, the role of interceding with the uh, mad head coach. Ten points for Cheek, along with a couple of rebounds and a couple of assists. So a four-point possession there because of the foul, and then the two free throws after the technical, and it's back to a 14-point Villanova lead. There's Crowder still without a point. Until now, as Crowder drains a three. And Marquette back with an 11. Crowder a 39% three-point shooter. Sutton had it stripped by Crowder. Averages better than three steals per game in league action, and Crowder gets another one there. Johnson Odom defended by Cheek. Uses the Crowder screen. Couldn't score inside, wanted a foul call, but Driscoll says it was a good block. Let's see if Villanova can get a good shot opportunity here. This is on Johnson to get his team set. He'll drive the paint. Johnson Odom hanging in there, and the foul is called. A charge against Villanova. Tomorrow night on ESPNU, it's ACC Sunday Night Basketball. As Georgia Tech takes on number eight, North Carolina. Coverage begins with the ACC Sunday night pregame show at 5.30 Eastern time. Foul is on Ty Johnson, his second. So an opportunity now for Marquette to get it down to single figure. Well, this is Ty Johnson. And remember, he's, he's, it's a bad decision. And he has not gotten his team quality looks here in the last several possessions. And part of that is, remember, he missed a ton of time leading up to the preseason with an injury. So both point guards for Villanova with two fouls. And that's traveling. He caught his own air ball. Johnson Odom. So a turnover. Although Driscoll is coming over. To talk to Tim Quagarty or make that debriding, saying that it was actually deflected. So it will be Marquette ball. It was touched by a Villanova player, an inadvertent whistle. Initially, they thought Johnson Odom caught his own air ball. Where did they touch it? I don't Doesn't think anybody like did it. touch it. Yeah. It didn't touch the rim. So it appeared that Quagarty's initial call was correct and that breeding should not have overruled. <laughs> so Jay's going to be even happier with him. <laughs> Wilson with the jumper that won't fall. Trying to go behind the back was Yakubu. Not a smart decision. Oh, but a steal by Johnson. He takes it in and scores. Devante Gardner called for traveling on the other end. Boy, sloppy. Uh, just hasn't been very good. Nice job by Ty Johnson. It's been a little bit of a struggle, but make a defensive play. Don't hang your head. Go ahead and make something positive happen. So Gardner to the bench. Another substitution as Kadugan also goes to the bench. So you're surviving if you're Villanova. 13-point lead inside five to play. And Waynes is back on the floor here with two fouls. You agree with that move by Jay Wright? Well, again, I think you're just you're, you're basing it based on your personality. He's a junior. He's got a ton of experience. He's not been the lead guy. You just say, hey, I don't want to charge on the offensive end here. And he gets his shot rejected by Wilson. Mayo out in transition will miss with the left hand, but a late whistle. Foul on Bell, his second. It'll be two free throws. And the official just signaling that the defender caught the offensive player on the forehead as he was attacking the rim. 
And you can see, obviously, He definitely got him there. Todd Mayo in Big East game shooting 85% at the line. First point of the game for Mayo averages close to 10 on the year. His older brother O.J. Mayo, Memphis Grizzlies. See, Mayo and Wilson, I think, as freshmen have shown moments where they're tremendous but they can also both disappear in stretches where you're not calling their name very often but they've got the benefit of having crowder and djo he really wanted no part of that so he dribbles it back out now back down to kennedy working on the small crowder wilson comes over with a double team and the errant pass leads to a turnover Jay, boy, he is just, he is in his guys right there just saying, hey, take the ball to the rim. Don't make that pass. Fifth turnover in the last ten possessions for Villanova. As Jay's going to take Waynes out of the game right now and put Johnson back on the floor. Sutton will come in and Yuru will go to the bench. Johnson Odom, who has 10 points, all here in the last eight minutes. Crowder hit a three earlier, short that time. When's the last time Mark Fetz put together a sequence where they've had back-to-back -back offensive possessions where they've scored? Been either team, either team, really. Here's Cheek for three. Long rebound to DJO. Here's Crowder, another three-point try. Hit that one. Second triple for Crowder, and Marquette has it down to eight. The largest lead of the first half for Villanova was 18 at 28 to 10. And Crowder with the block on Sutton. Johnson Odom in transition. A oh, beautiful move with the offhand, but a defender, secondary defender was there. Hilliard and an offensive area, though his heels are off the ground. And that is the second foul on Johnson Odom. Marquette was getting a little bit of momentum, too, so that was a, a big call. 8 2 run by the Golden Eagles right now. But a lead eight. And Yuru out of control on the baseline, turns it over. Here's Mayo, swatted away. Emphatic block by Cheek. Two on one. Cheek to Hilliard. And a foul called on Derek Wilson. And it has to be Cheek making plays at this point. Without Waynes, it's been a struggle to get quality offensive possessions. So the couple of times they've scored, it's been defensive plays, whether Ty Johnson picks off the pass, or in this instance, how about that length and block? And then this is, to me, where he's at his best when he's trying to slash or make plays to pass the two-on-one. Second foul on Wilson. Both teams in the double bonus. And Darren Hilliard at the foul line had 12 points in the first meeting with Marquette. A win by the Golden Eagles on New Year's Day in the Big East Open. He'll get stronger, Dave. And I, you know, I think he's got some skill. Uh, he's got to get a little bit with time in the weight room to fill out that frame. A handful of freshmen on this Villanova team. And the leading scorer, Malik Waynes, is a junior. To Dugan. And the elbow jumper off target. Trying to keep it alive is Jamil Wilson, but can't. We're working against that Villanova zone that showed a couple of possessions of that. And Marquette, one of the things they stress offensively is getting below the free throw line. Kadugan did his job getting there. Here's Cheek for three. Rattles in and out. And Crowder gets to the loose ball and a reach-in foul on Marcus Kennedy, his second. 
Well, you mentioned we have two of the top scoring guards in the league on display today, and you can vote for who you think the best guard in the Big East is. Our ESPN.com poll. Go to Facebook.com slash ESPN Home Court. You know, it's interesting. I, I tweeted that out this week, Doris, and there are a lot of people responding saying it's Scoop Jardine. But Jardine is not on our list, and hard to argue that Deion Waiters is the best guard on the team so how can Jardine be the best guard yeah, in the league? come on waiters has been by far the best guard now don't misunderstand me i mean Jardine doing a great job getting all the talent around him shots he's only taken six shots a game so i mean no disrespect but the best guard on syracuse this season has been Dion waiters question is has he been the best guard in the big east Dion waiters well the fans will have their say we'll talk a little bit more in the second half i'll okay. let you know who i think has been the best guard Let's tease the, the, the viewers a little bit. Is he playing in this game? Can you give me that? No, I can't. That's giving it away. No, it's not. There's two of them here. <laughs> Johnson, Odo, and Waynes. Got a foul call on Wilson, his third. And again, both teams in the double bonus. So it'll be free throws for Villanova. Leading by nine late in the first half. Led by 18 earlier in the contest. Right, doing some teaching with his freshman backup point guard, Ty Johnson. Now you think about a team that went over to France and the Netherlands. Johnson couldn't play in that, misses time. And the last thing you can afford as a freshman guard is to miss any time. Time with your teammates, time getting the system, time repetition-wise, running the offense. And Johnson a little bit behind and it really took till December I think until Jay Wright probably felt in a position and comfortable enough to play him That's a team that's always been guard oriented their best teams have had outstanding guards No, you break the second one that's a push off and that's three fouls on Marcus Kennedy I'll Come back down the other way for foul shots no rhythm. I mean, other than the great Villanova start, there's been absolutely no rhythm to this game. Now, when this kind of, when this happens, is there one team do you think has an advantage? Yes, I would say Marquette because they're more experienced. They, you know, they got off to just an abysmal start and they've hung tough, right? I mean, they just keep playing. Devontae Gardner, since league play began, close to 13 points. And seven rebounds per contest. He's a good free throw shooter. Couldn't hit that one. 74% of the year. More substitutions for Marquette. And one more foul shot for Gardner. One of the best in the conference in terms of field goal percentage. One out of two at the line on that trip. And it's a nine-point game again. Jamel Jones comes into the game for Marquette. You know, a lot of times, Doris, you'll see players come in and out, and they'll put the warm-up jersey back on when they go to the bench. You don't see that with Marquette. Yeah. You're not going to be there long, especially today. <laughs> you don't have time. 23-14 <laughs> to run right now by Marquette. Kept the pivot foot down. Yuru with a turnaround and doesn't get the bounce. Something trying to keep it alive. And he puts it up and in. First field goal for Maurice Sutton. Odom, leading score in the game for Marquette with 10 points. Shot clock at six. Under a minute to play in the first half. And here's Anderson on the drive and a blocking foul called with two on the shot clock. So two free throws coming up for Juan Anderson. Tomorrow, ABC and ESPN bring you two NBA games. The day starts with Kia NBA countdown at 3 Eastern. ABC, it's the Bulls and Heat. And then... Doris will be on hand for the game on ESPN at 6.30. Dan Schulman, Spurs, and Mavs. I'm hearing Dirk Nowitzki. Nowitzki might be back for that Sunday night telegram. It will make our life a little bit better. And certainly better than his announcing skills, which are on display. We saw SportsCenter at all this week. <laughs> I thought that was great.
You enjoyed that? He was very excitable over there. But you have to be coherent. It's one thing to be excitable, but you got to be able to understand you, Dirk. <laughs> Anderson way off of second free throw and 50 seconds left, Villanova ball and an 11-point lead. Hilliard for three. Not there. Cheek with a rebound. He can't put it back. Oh, Sutton with another tip. Two quick putbacks by Sutton, and the lead stretches back to 13. The shot clock is off. Wilson defended by Ty Johnson. And here's Johnson Odom with 10 seconds remaining in the half. Against Dominic Cheek, the step back three. Buries it. Darius Johnson Odom nails the triple. Two seconds remaining. Johnson from half court. Just off the mark as Marquette cuts an 18 point deficit to. Or slipped and fell. Breeding gave him a technical. He said to Breeding, I slipped. So both head coaches with a technical. And a lot of fouls and free throws in that first half. We'll see if that trend continues after a first half that took well over an hour. Pinkston can't score inside, and Crowder out of there with it. Marquette looking to get it down to single figures. Golden Eagles used to trailing. In a lot of games this year where they've been poor in the first half and been great in the second half. And it blew way off the mark with that attack. Well, that's the absence of a jump shot in his game. Good defense by Cadogan, and then Crowder fouled. And that's the third on Yuru. So he'll go to the bench, and another guy with three, Marcus Kennedy, will come in to replace him. And just one clarification. Uh, we talked in the first half about uh, a play by Darius Johnson Odom, I believe, where he, he put up a shot attempt and then caught it himself. We thought it was a violation. I thought it was a travel. The rule states... It's not a violation, according to Art Highland, who works with the officials in the Big East Conference. It's not. You, it doesn't have to hit rim or backboard. To me, it should be. And to me, that you, you could make that play as a basketball player and put yourself in a better position. And can't you just throw it up to yourself? And... Right. Here's Crowder for three. He's been hanging on to that three-point line. And now he's got ten points. Struggled mightily first 10 minutes but to three threes now and it's a seven point game Wayne's in trouble will shoot it anyway and Crowder with the backside board two on one Johnson Odom alley -oop, and the slam by Vanderblue timeout Villanova it's a five point game the second half and it's frustrating to come out of the locker room you just had your speech you may need that timeout later in the ball game let's we'll see how his team responds again they hit their first four threes and since then just one made triple and their offense sputtered when Malik Waynes went out of the game they hung on for a while but just didn't stay consistent on offense Dominic Cheek has played well today. He's got 13 points, bettering his average for an entire game during the regular season as Wilson fires off the heel. Waynes with a long rebound. Waynes, the league's leading scorer in conference games, cannot finish in transition. Darius Johnson Odom down the lane. He missed the layup. A lot of missed shots around the rim by both teams. Pinkston into the defender, blocking foul, so it'll be a three-point opportunity. Kadugan tried to draw the charge, instead called for his first personal. Now, Pinkston, the last four or five games, has been tremendous. He's now a little up fake. He gets the defender sold. He's got a very good frame, and this is where he struggled, is the free throw line. It has been a mighty struggle. He's been a little bit better of late. Let's see how his form looks, because in high school, Pinkston was fine from the free throw line. 62% overall in the year. 
And he misses there, and that's going to be four on Kennedy, and that's the second time they've gotten him for a foul, working to get an offensive rebound off a missed free throw. Silly, right? You don't do that. So four on him, and Yuru has three. So Yuru will come back into the game. They don't have much else after that in terms of depth in the middle. They do have Sutton, who has played some minutes so far in this ball game. Actually gave him pretty good minutes, yeah. I thought, in the first half. He's a guy that had been a starter in previous years, but minutes way down this year. Kadugan. And a foul call. First on the third, rather, on Villanova. Yuru again. So four are on Yuru. And more college basketball from the Big East at 4 Eastern as Georgetown takes on a pit team that's just 1-7. In league play, then at 7 Eastern tonight, it's Washington and Arizona. So it will be Sutton off the bench as Yuru picks up that fourth foul. Kadugan hits the first free throw. They're also going to bring Kubu into the game, but he's a guard. He'll replace Hillier. So Kennedy and Yuru, both with four fouls. For Villanova. Kadugan, a junior from Toronto, gets both free throws his first points of the game. And he averages six points per game, but he's one of the better assist men in the Big East. Marquette with a win could potentially, by the end of the day, be in sole possession of second place. But Malik Waynes trying to keep. Villanova as a team on the rise, 3-3 three and three in their last six games after an 0-3 start in league play. It's a three there. Lead back to 10. Kadugan's three. Can't answer. The tip won't roll home for Wilson, and out of there with it is Bell. Four on two. Wayne's another three-point try. And Sutton goes flying in there trying to keep it alive. And then a foul called on Yakubu. 14 foul on Villanova in the half. First on Yakubu. Now you're mentioning the standings, Doris. There's a lot of teams in the Big East. I mean, last year you had 11 teams. It was pretty clear you're going to get 9 to 11 in the Big East tournament this year. Boy, could you get five? Could you get eight? There are a lot of teams that are around 500 overall that are probably better than a lot of teams in other leagues. I mean, Villanova, is Villanova really a 10-11 and 11 team? Or are they a much better squad that just plays in a tougher league? Is that one out of bounds off of Marquette? Well, I don't think they've proven themselves yet. I, I think they've got to beat more people, obviously. And I think, unfortunately, because the way the, the Big East is... You know, you've got the big gap between Syracuse and the rest of the league. That's just sloppy, sloppy here. There's a huge gap, obviously. And then I, I still think you're going to have teams that are going to beat each other up. Uh, uh, the only teams I feel like are a position to maybe get separation would be Georgetown. I think they're going to be really, really good. I think there'll be some surprises in this league. You know, Marquette's got to, they've got to dig this one out here. You, losing to a 10 and 11 team on your resume is not good. And you've not proven. You came on this broadcast talking about trying to get a big win on the road. That is something the committee looks at. Here's Johnson Odom working on Cheek. And we've got teams like Seton Hall as uh, Gardner scores. Notre Dame, Cincinnati. Teams that have been up and down this year but have some big wins. It makes you wonder, well, how good are those teams? And, you know, how good is Marquette? You mentioned the Vanderbilt. They have an awful in that game, but then Marquette's also had some good wins. But on the road, they beat Providence. That's it. A Marquette foul call as Gardner was trying to draw the charge. Well, Villanova out in front, and Malik Waynes is six. He's just been so productive. Avon Pinkston at the line for Villanova, which has an eight-point lead. Pinkston now with eight points. Devontae Gardner, before he went to commercial, picked up his third foul. The two bigs for Villanova, Kennedy and Yuru, with four fouls apiece. So Sutton getting extended minutes, 11 minutes so far in this game. 
And again, he's a guy that in the past couple of years got starters minutes, but has not played a whole lot this year. Remember the couple of offensive rebounding sequences when Villanova got to work in that first half. He was in the mix to those. Here's Kadugan spinning on Waynes and then Sutton batted that down. I don't know if that was a shot or a pass attempt. Villanova led by as many as 18 in the first half. Marquette in the second half cut the Wildcat lead to five. But back to a 10-point advantage before Sutton commits an offensive foul coming out to set the screen. Only his first. And a 15 foul on Villanova. Johnson Odom Wilson from deep and that's a long two by Jamil Wilson Wilson's played almost 20 minutes off the bench he now has eight points Prada with a good deflection defensively and trying to get to the loose ball bodies on the floor Sutton Trying to call for timeout. And he got it. First, it looked like he didn't have possession when he was calling timeout. Early. But he just asked you to give great effort defensively. He's going to give you some space offensively. He's going to let you go off high ball screens and show your skills. You're a guard. You love to play for this guy. Shot clock down to five. Bell for three. And rebound by Wilson. Back to your point, you said it a couple times, just about how Marquette does not panic. As Sutton gets the block, the Crowder stays with it and wouldn't roll home. Marquette will get another possession here. The team that went to the Sweet 16 last year, they beat Syracuse in the NCAA tournament. Johnson on him, leaves it for Wilson. He'll put it in, and it's a six-point game. I love Wilson. He's got a tremendous body. He's long, he's lean. He can push out and outrun you in transition. Very quick off his feet. He just needs to be a little bit more consistent. Wayne's tough pass to handle there for Pinkston. And now Johnson Odom buries a three. It's a three-point game as Johnson Odom now has 16. It. On that list are guards at multiple positions. For me, both my top guards are here. I would give Malik Waynes a slight advantage over Vincent Council at the lead guard spot in the Big East this year. And I would give Darius Johnson Odom to this point a slight lead over Jeremy Lamb at the two guard position. I, I just I think you have to evaluate it not just as a guard, but as by position. Kennedy back on the floor, playing with four personal fouls in the middle for Villanova. Yaru on the bench with four. Wayne still has two. Shot clock at eight and Bell's three. And Johnson Odom tapped it out. Here's Crowder for three. It's good. And we're tied at 55. An 18 point first half deficit erased by the 18th ranked team in the country. And now an offensive foul called, and that's five on Kennedy. He's gone. The Memphis Grizzly a little bit, the, the Marquette team, because it's sort of like grit and grind. Just keep grinding and grinding, and eventually something good's going to happen. I mean, you you had a weather a day, and Kadugan is hugely important to their success, okay? But in three of the last four games, this guy has gone four turnovers, three turnovers, then one turnover. But I think he's got four today, if I'm not mistaken, at least three, if not four. So they're weathering that play from Kaduga. It's an 11-0 run over the last minute and a half by Marquette to tie the game. 
Johnson Odom picked up by Ty Johnson. Now Cheek defends, and Johnson Odom will shoot long range. Wilson is there. Can't put it back, but they're going to count it. They're going to say basket interference on the defense. So count the bucket, and Marquette has the lead. Now transition opportunity. Crowder, four of six. Between the two of them, they have 101 made three-point baskets this year. I really believe that if Villanova's going to win this ball game, Waynes is going to have to be as electric and as capable scoring the ball as he's proven to be in the last four games. Dominic Cheek has been terrific in this ball game and now has 16 points to lead Villanova. That's a toughness basket right there. And Blue called for traveling. So out of the timeout, Villanova gets a three to take the lead in the Marquette with an empty possession on the other end. Here's Waynes, who has eight points, but again, has spent half the game on the bench in foul trouble. Chief defended by Wilson. A great bounce pass. Count the bucket for Kingston. And the foul. Jay Wright just pointed at Dominique Cheek as he was standing out after making that pass. Boy, that is just back-to-back -back tremendous plays by the junior. A McDonald's All-American in high school. Nice look. I mean, just sell it with the up fake. Pretty pass. You know, sometimes uh. you'll see Cheek and with the defender in the air try to lean in and draw the foul and take the shot, but he didn't. He saw his man underneath and made the pass. That looks like a play you'd see from Georgetown, doesn't it? Yes. Where, where the pass is almost beating the cutter to the rim. Kingston hits the free throw. The foul is on Crowder is third, and Villanova is back on top by four. A double Gardner and a foul. Gardner didn't like it, and Breeding separates Pinkston and Gardner. Three on Pinkston. I think what Pat Driscoll is saying to James Breeding it, do we have to assess anything more than a personal foul here? I think that's the discussion. Or was there a flagrant foul there? And the officials are talking about it. I think their job is hard enough, so I think anything you can do to assist in that process is probably a good thing. Yeah, and I'll say this, uh, something I'd like to see on the women's side, and, and the Big East administrators would have to step up on this. Not every Big East school has a monitor for non-televised women's games. And there was an issue at Providence against uh, Jen Rosati's Fairfield coach team, where they are Hartford, excuse me, Hartford coach team. And they didn't have the monitor. And to me, there are other, you know, conferences, America East, and, and certainly conferences with lesser resources than the Big East. And those administrators have not stepped up on the women's side and provided the monitor. That needs to get done. And I'm not just taking a shot at my alma mater, Providence. Every building in women's basketball, because the coverage is not the same, obviously. Well, obviously, the adjustment's been made on the men's side because it's an important part of the game if you miss something like that. They're not working any less hard, the women. Cheek missed the layup, tried to spin it in off glass. So Marquette with an opportunity to maybe retake the lead on this possession. Midway through the second half, Golden Eagles trying to get to 7-2. Currently tied with Georgetown for second in the Big East, a game and a half behind Syracuse. Johnson Odom with a three-point opportunity. He finishes with his offhand the right, and he'll, he'll go to the free throw line for one. How much is there to this guy's game? We, we, we documented his up fake. He's got a tremendous crossover. He'll change pace. He can adjust in the air. He can take contact. And, and, and more importantly, I just like his assertiveness. And, but it's been timely assertiveness with him and Crowder. They've made timely plays. They give the foul to Waynes, his third. What's your take on Johnson Odom and Jake Crowder at the NBA level? And the reason I ask that is because you're looking at you know, DJ 062, Crowder 6566. You know, Wes Matthews has had a pretty good NBA career. They weren't yeah. sure about him coming out. He's kind of in the same mold. You have Lazar Hayward, another Marquette player that 
the same type of player that's now in the NBA. See, I, I like Crowder. I, you know, I think he's a guy who's, what position is he? I don't care. He's a productive guy. A tip by Sutton. Going to the back on top by one. What about so, Johnson? Odom yeah, well, I know you, you worry about his size, but I think as a second unit player, he can absolutely make it. And there's one reason why he can yeah. make those shots. Yep, 40% three point shooter. And now he's got 22 points. His third three, Marquette by two. Marquette, the hottest team in the Big East, winners of five in a row. And a turnover by Villanova. 17th giveaway by the Wildcats. A little discussion between Malik Waynes and Mo Sutton. And Jay just trying to keep things calm. He looked at Malik and kind of put his hands up as if to say, all right, that one got away, we're all right. Crowder, Cadugan, Johnson Odom, Blue, and Gardner on the floor for Marquette. Waynes, Pinkston, Sutton, Bell, and Chief on the court for Villanova. Bell with a good pass breakup, and then a head to Sutton for the jam. Maurice Sutton, who averages less than a point per game, has nine today. Gardner has the smaller wings on him, called for traveling. And to do that, I think is going to get subbed out here, and I believe he just committed his fifth turnover. So I've been bragging about this guy's assisted turnover ratio and where he sits in the Big East Conference in terms of that number. He's fifth, well over two. But the turnover is mounting. He's got five of those 13. And they have five as a team in their last game against South Florida. Granted, you can't expect that every night, but coming off a game in which they protected the basketball well, not the case today. And now a discussion between Pat Bristol and Tim Clockerty. I'm not sure what this is about. Now, Kadugan has added value in other areas. I don't mean to say he's completely, you know, not been good. He's battled Waynes all day defensively. I'm not sure the reason for the stoppage. The ruling on the court was traveling. Request it, and it's almost like a football. You challenge it, you go to the monitor. If the play is upheld, you lose a timeout. So that's what happens there with Marquette. He thought that there was a punch or something flagrant. And they went to the monitor as Villanova turns it over to see whether there was a flagrant one or flagrant two. There was nothing. So Marquette loses a timeout. Is this the longest Big East game in history? Because <laughs> it feels like it. Uh, there was a six overtime game in the uh, Big East tournament a few years ago that I'd remind you about. Yeah, that's true. But well, we've had 42 free throws attempted in this game. We had two technicals, three reviews. And a tie ball game, so this may not end in regulation at good, this rate. Good thing no one's got a tight flight. <laughs> next game's up next here, ESPN, ESPN 2. Yeah, don't forget another Big East game for a Georgetown pit today. As Marquette turns it over, here's Waynes in transition, taking it all the way, he's fouled. A reach in by Todd Mayo. First on him. 14 foul on Marquette. He's on the way up, so Waynes will shoot two. Two of the better free throw shooting teams in the Big East. Marquette is fourth. Villanova first. As Waynes is over 90% in league game. He leads the conference in foul shooting. Now has nine points as they're going to keep him and Ty Johnson on the floor together. Johnson, the backup point guard, enters the game replacing Pinkston. And again, the number down today because Wayne's 
uh, sat out for about eight or nine minutes of that first half in college over. Well, and also, I think Kadugan has tried to battle him defensively, and as has his backup. Derek Wilson, in his minutes, has tried to battle Waynes. Johnson owned him off the screen, got free for a moment, but he couldn't hit the three. And Sutton with the rebound. Gardner right in his grill, but Sutton able to get it to a dog. Villanova ball leading by two. Stripped by Blue. Out of bounds off Marquette. Two-point game. Georgetown and Marquette, who are currently tied for second. Golden Eagles overcame an 18-point deficit to take the lead, but Villanova right now on top by two, inside eight to play. Bell putting it on the floor, getting past Crowder. Nice drive by sophomore James Bell, who has 13 points. Help defender can't commit the way Cheeks shot the basketball today. He had to stay attached to him. Crowder trying to return it to Wilson after the screen. Back out to Kadugan. He's got five turnovers, as you mentioned. Wayne's also with five. For Villanova. Oh, how about that dribble and step back? Males three in and out. And Sutton with his ninth rebound and then had to call a timeout. He hit the floor and had to burn Villanova's last. How does Villanova handle seven minutes without being able to call a timeout? Especially when you got a young team. Well, I mean, listen, I, this is why I, I referenced that, that timeout you had to take coming out of the locker room. What had 92 seconds or something elapsed? That's a killer as a coach. And then you almost would rather have had Sutton either get a tie up and lose possession because it was going to be a dead ball turnover in that last instance. Shot clock down to six. Bell on Crowder. And Crowder got the rebound after good defense. Marquette ball trailing by four. The lob to Wilson, and he can't finish with a left hand. Got it back, though. Missed again. And out of bounds off of Villanova. And a technical foul has been called on Villanova. Jay Wright was called for a technical earlier. And let's see here. It goes. The ruling was that it went off of Villanova. We have not been told yet who the technical foul was called on. Apparently a player. As Johnson Odom hits the first free throw. One more coming in the ball. The foul was on. They should call a foul. Johnson Odom gets both. Here's your answer as to how they're going to use their timeouts to manage the game. All right, so they call the technical on Waynes. Was it Breeding again who called that technical? He was the one closest to it in the replay. And if that's three technical fouls in, in one game by James Breeding, I mean, at some point you sit there and go, are you, why? Called one on Jay Wright in the first half and another on Buzz Williams. And Williams claimed he fell down and Breeding thought he was trying to show up the officials and dove on the ground as Marquette gets an easy bucket backdoor cut by Crowder. Well, that's a huge play right there. And first of all, let's go back to the Buzz Williams things. A, a, a member of the Villanova administration was sitting right there and told me he did fall down. So, so it was legitimate. It was legit, according to this administrator. So should not have been a tee. This Bell's three way off, and Johnson Odom with the board. Marquette looking to go back on top. Johnson Odom racing down court and able to get the roll. There he is, Johnson Odom. 26 points after not scoring the first eight minutes of the game. As Jay Wright is just going after the official in front of his bench right now. It'll stay Villanova ball. Let's see this technical foul on Waynes. And they 
They gave Waynes a tackle, didn't see anything there. I mean, that's also personal. So that's four fouls on, on Waynes. Well, I'll just say this. He's got a short fuse then, Jim's breeding, because that's three times. Jay was shocked by his technical. Buzz was couldn't believe it. And Waynes' reaction. Waynes stripped. Got a foul called with six on the shot clock. Only the 15 foul on Marquette, so it'll be ball out of bounds. And they just got Crowder for his fourth personal foul. And Crowder will go to the bench. Devontae Gardner will come in. Here's Aru playing with four personals. Not really been a factor in this game because of that as Cheeks three gets stuck. And they go to the possession arrow when that happens and it will be Marquette ball. It makes you wonder, did, did Wayne's curse? Because it wasn't an overly demonstrative where he was showing the official up, right? Same thing with Jay Wright. There was no... Unless there was something verbal, there was no... Or there was nothing non-verbal. There was no adamant display of emotion from Jay Wright when the technical happened. But we're not hearing, nor did we lip read anything that Wayne said, so perhaps it was what he said that was egregious. Could do get in the paint, and Marquette with a four point lead. Four and a half to go. This is the biggest lead for Marquette, trailed by 18 in the first half. Here's Wayne's got into the lane, got to be careful because of those four fouls and a blocking. Ball here. That's four on Devontae Gardner of Marquette. Outstanding job with body control by Waynes to avoid the contact and make sure that he was sort of moving in a direction that would force it to be a block. And the best free throw shooter in the Big East, Malik Waynes, at the line for two. An eight nothing run right now by Marquette that ends here. So what was that swing after the technical? And Jay is is really animated in his discussion with James Breeding. 8-0 run for Marquette right after that call. Twelfth point for Waynes. Averages 19 per game at over 20 in league action. Cuts the Marquette advantage to two. Just outside four minutes to go in the second half. Johnson Odom. And now Kadugan with a reset. Kadugan, great look. Gardner blew the layup. And it's cleared by Pinkston. Ahead to Waynes, trying to track down the loose ball. And he stepped on the baseline. Turnover Villanova. Telling how long it'll be before this. He's assuming back in studio this game is going to end. <laughs> 48 free throw attempts. 40 fouls. Three technical fouls. I, I hope. Three reviews. I mean, I hope that Malik Wayne said something completely objectionable. Otherwise, if you're breeding, I don't think you can you, you can make that technical foul call. And if we keep in mind, Wayne's had a technical last week at MSG too. And, and to your point, on the call, uh, well, first of all, you don't know what Jay Wright said in the first half as Kadugan misses, and, and also with Buzz Williams, the call was made assuming that Williams was trying to show up the official by diving on the floor. But as Williams claimed, and someone, as you mentioned, from Villanova confirmed that no, he, he just slipped. So obviously Breeding didn't see that. It was a reactionary call. Do you agree with that? Yes, and, and that's and he, I believe he was. You know, he just saw him on the ground and, and assumed it was sort of a demonstrative show-me-up kind of move. Great look by Gardner to Crowder, and it's back to a four-point lead at the three-minute mark. Crowder now with 17 points. We talked about Marquette showing some toughness and playing through adverse circumstances. You need the same thing from Villanova right now. Cheek will fire a three. Sutton batting it around. And Crowder out of there with it. Here's Johnson Odom with that high dribble. And good decision by Mayo to pull it out. Oh, 
Gardner and able to hit Crowder, who's fouled. Tenth team foul on Villanova, so two free throws the rest of the way. Third personal on Bell. Crowder, 71% free throw shooter, will go to the line. And then Villanova, without a timeout, they've been without a timeout since the seven-minute mark. Last year, Crowder averaged under 12 points per game as a guy who started about half the game, six man the other half. Now this year, he's become one of the better scorers in the league and an outstanding shooter as well. Well, just so versatile. I mean, really, you could basically switch five positions with this guy on a perimeter screen. Uh, their coverage isn't screen and roll. It gives you so many options. I don't miss the second one. Winner X Games up next here on ESPN2. Foul call as uh, Waynes was coming off the screen on Jamil Wilson of Marquette. That's four on him. All right, well, we asked throughout the week who you feel the best guard in the Big East is. And you could vote on Facebook. We had almost 1,000 people vote. And Dion Waiters, the winner. But Darius Johnson Odom, a close second. Anything surprise you as you look at that? And I wouldn't mind popping it up again, but I you know what I waiters has been absolutely tremendous and what a what a sign of maturity uh, For that guy to completely accept coming off the bench, which was really difficult for him a year ago Good Offensive rebound by Bell and then he missed the shot Wayne's only got 5% of the votes that one surprised me a little bit Well, obviously, you know Syracuse's record is going to help waiters case Steal by Nova. Here's Pinkston. He'll take it in and throw it down. Fourteen points for Pinkston, and it's a three-point game again. Crowder ascends to its feet at Wells Fargo. Johnson Odom, no. Crowder offensive rebound, and no foul called. Then the ball out of bounds off of Villanova. Well, Crowder frustrated that he didn't get a foul call. It certainly looked like there was some contact on his body as he went to go back up with that rebound. We get the benefit of a second look. No, nope, that's a very good no call by Pat Driscoll. And he look at look at the position Pat Driscoll's in. Perfect. Marquette ball in a three-point lead. And then Bell went for the steal. But gets back on defense. Plenty of time to shoot. Gardner to Crowder. He'll let it fly. Off target, but there is Gardner. He'll put it on the floor. Oh, a lot of contact. No whistles. And Marquette with an extra possession. Johnson Odom to Gardner. And a block. And now a five on three. Johnson Odom staying back with his injured teammate. Cheek for three. Yaru with a rebound, and then he throws it into the backcourt. Five on four, and at one point a five on three as Johnson Odom was back with his injured teammate, Devontae Gardner, and Villanova comes up with nothing. And now it's Marquette Ball. Gardner cutting underneath, and Sutton got his hand on the ball, and it's last touch by Marquette. Oh, Maury Sutton has given Villanova great minutes off the bench. Yeah, he has helped them as a, a long defender over the course of his career. Gets a piece of that inbounds. Johnson Odom knocked it out of bounds, so it is Villanova ball. No timeouts remaining. Yeah, How do you, you handle this here, Doris? You don't need a three. You've got enough time. But if you, if you get a clean look, especially Cheek or Bell. Here is Cheek off the screen. He'll fire. And way off of the three-point try, and then a foul called on Bell. Rebound by Blue. That's actually the right guy to foul. He's around 40% in conference games. Too quick of a shot there. You got it in the hands of a guy who's yeah. played well today. Right. I think so. 
because yet you could have made one more pass or even gone back to Malik and done a dribble drive. But it's easy to say when he misses that jumper. It's hard for a right-handed shooter squaring to that direction. Blue one of two today at the line. As mentioned, in Big East games, around 40% of the strike. Overall, 60%. And he hits that one. A two-shot situation with Villanova in the double bone. Well, a quick look at this. The defender's in pretty good position. You see Johnson Odom gets a hands up and a hand up and challenge. Blue gets them both. And it's a five-point game. Since that wins technical, it's been a 13-4 run by Marquette. Wayne's on the drive, can't score, but there's Sutton again with the stuff. One possession game. Inbound at the Crowder. And they'll foul him with 21.9 on the clock. He'll shoot two. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Yeah, they did a nice job, Marquette, of keeping it out of the hands of Vander Blue. And it's really, as you talked about, these are good free throw shooting teams. Vander Blue would be the least... But he just made two, so. Exactly, exactly. But still, you play your percentages of your Villanova and try to funnel him to the ball. Pinkston picked up his fourth foul. Crowder at the line, shooting two. 71% free throw shooter on the season. Gets the bounce, make it a four-point game. It's 19 points now for Crowder. You wouldn't call this an under-officiated game. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> They've been busy. Crowder gets both free throws. So four consecutive made free throws here in the final 40 seconds by Marquette. It's a five-point lead. Let's we'll see if they go for three or two here. Waynes will fire a three and back rimmed it. And Johnson Odom got the rebound and turned it over. So Villanova ball. Couldn't keep his balance. Now you have to shoot a three here, 11.9 yep, on the clock. And you're saying no fouls. Extend to the three. Winter X Games in 11.9 seconds, maybe. Pinkston for three. Villanova cannot call a timeout, and they foul Vander Blue. So if you're inbounding the ball there, if you're Marquette, why are you in such a rush to get it in bounds mm. when Blue is the closest mm. guy to you? Yeah. Why not wait for, for Johnson Odom to come get the ball? It's amazing because the play is moving quickly and your opponent is playing at that pace that you get caught in it But you're right. You've got time here good efficient use here By Pinkston and then just take your time why rush if you're Crowder and then you see Darius Johnson on him in mid-court yeah. There's no one around him. Yeah, if Crowder would have waited for another second as Malik Waynes has now fouled out Maybe the best three-point shooter he would have waited another heartbeat. He could have had a, a dunk and a game winner on the other end. You know, Crowder's sitting there thinking to himself, I just want to inbound this cleanly. He doesn't want to be the GOAT, and therefore he's he's not allowing his thought processes to play and say, okay, let us let me find my best free throw shooter. Or let me look up floor for a, what could have been a layup. Now Blue did just hit two free throws a moment ago. It was three of four on the night. Shooting two here, and he gets the first one. Three-point game. Over the last 30 minutes, Marquette has outscored Villanova by 21. Blue trying to make it 22 during that span and win the ball game essentially. And it's a four-point lead for Marquette. That allows Buzz Williams to come back onto the floor and breathe a little bit easier. Again, no Malik Waynes. Johnson for three. Short. Loose ball. Ball game. Marquette survives. Trailed by 18 in the first half. Comes storming back.